Hey, what's up everybody? So today I'm on a service. It's my first job and we are checking in on a Red Sea Peninsula tank that's been up for a little bit over a year. This tank, it struggled a little bit at the beginning with some of your brown algae. We had really bad diatom bloom in this tank, which we still in some ways are fighting. But once we really um, figured out the right balance between nitrates and phosphates in this tank, it's just taken off and the corals have just exploded. So I want to take you guys inside, just show you some of the growth on these corals. It's absolutely insane. So it's a Red Sea uh, Peninsula style tank and it's been up for about, I'd say about 15, 16 months or something like that. So first off right here, we have some pink zippers right there and that started off with just two heads. And look at this, look at the growth on that. It's just, it's awesome. I'm, I'm really happy with the way that's going. Then we have this cephastria that started off uh, in this tank on a little frag plug about the size of a quarter and it's just taken off. It's starting to take over that whole rock, which we've dedicated that whole rock to that cephastria. I think it'd be really cool. Trumpets look healthy. They're big and blown up like a balloon. That's how you want your trumpets to look. So that's a good sign. Blastos, three different types of blastos all kind of chilling there. But those uh, pallies are starting to encroach on them. So we're going to have to kind of get in there and frag it up a bit, give the blastos a little bit more room to grow. We got a hairy mushroom, we got some mushrooms, corals in here looking really healthy. Uh, soft corals in this tank, just in general, uh, uh, do really, really well. Uh, we do have some LPS. Here's a bubble coral that's just giant. We got some rock flower anemones. You can see a, a little green star pop, which fell off that mother colony up there that we have growing on the overflow. It's starting to grow on the substrate now. And then we do have some SPS. We have some, I believe that's a Apostolopora. I'm not sure. Uh, it's doing really well, but we can't have too much SPS because this little yellow goby right here likes to eat them. So we're gonna have to get him out of there. Or, and you see he's eating that A-can over there. He was munching on the A-can and that's why it's not looking too well. So I'll probably take that out of the tank and uh, put it in a hospital tank or something so it can recover a bit. But that, yeah, that, that little yellow goby, we're gonna have to figure out what we're gonna do with him. We're gonna try to catch him out of here so we can start putting some uh, SPS in here. And then we have this hammer coral that was two heads. That's now multiple heads. It's really coming along well. Uh, this hammer coral actually was, um, when we, we put this in a while back, we, uh, when we first put this in, it was struggling really, really bad. It was almost completely dead. And now look at it, it's made a, a big time comeback. I'm really happy about that one too. All right, and then we got tons and tons of Kenya tree all around here, you can see, which is kind of a problem. Uh, some anemones up here. Now this area right here in the front is dedicated mostly to Mohawk Zoas. Uh, we're gonna have to get in there and frag some of those up, but those, they have just really taken off. Um, and you can see a little urchin right there. It's got some little backpack full of Mohawk Zoas on them. <laughs> uh, but we still have this whole little area right here to put corals. That's where the Acan garden was, but the clown goby, you know, kind of destroyed that. Um, so we have some room from corals there. On the opposite side of the tank, uh, you can see from this point, there's tons and tons of Kenya tree. I'm gonna have to frag some of that up to make room for, for the rest of these corals. We have a good variety of corals in here and I don't want them to be out-competed or swallowed up by the Kenya tree. So I'll take some of that out today. And over here, we have some Sunny D's, Zoas, which started off as two heads and then you can see that colony down there actually broke off this mother colony up there. So all in all, the corals are really healthy. We're gonna have to uh, get rid of some of this Kenya tree to make room for some other stuff. Oh, I love that toadstool. I put that in there a, little, a while back. Oh, I love that thing. It's such a cool, uh, bright color coral. But yeah, we're gonna have to get in here and, and we're gonna have to clean up some of this Kenya tree to make sure that it doesn't outcompete the other corals and it will give us room to put a little bit more variety of corals. I'm hoping we can get some uh, more SPS in here, more LPS. Uh, I think we have enough soft corals in this tank. So that's the approach I'm gonna be taking baby blue trumpet coral that I'm going to be putting in this tank today just because this trumpet coral is doing so well. So well. Um, I think this would be work out really well, a great addition to the tank. So I got a water sample from the tank. We're going to go ahead and check the nitrates and phosphates and calcium and alkalinity and all that. But I'm really zeroed in on the, the nitrates in this tank because like I said, this tank just, it just sucks up nitrate and phosphate so fast. And if we don't stay on the nitrates being at the right level, we have a really hard time with uh, diatoms in this tank and brown algaes. Uh, phosphate's never really been an issue in this tank. We do have a refugium underneath. If anything, we need to dose more phosphate. All the corals look healthy, so the phosphate level, it seems to be enough to keep the corals happy. So let's go ahead and do this test. All right, so here we are. Here's our nitrate and phosphate. 
So this is absolutely, this is, this is right where I want it. This is perfect. So this is the Red Sea test kit. And the darker the green here would be the dark, would be the higher the phosphate, the, the more pink or reddish color would be the high, would be higher the nitrate. So right here, it's, it's kind of hard to show up on camera, but we're probably sitting about uh, 1.08, something like that for uh, on nitrate. So that's right where we want to be. So the phosphate is a little bit high, but it's okay because the there is no ill effects from the phosphate. There's no algae, uh, no green hair algae or anything like that. Um, we're, we are going to do a, a, a decent water change today, so that'll help. But everything's pretty, pretty happy and healthy. And, and because the corals are taking off and because they look so good, I don't want to go ahead and I mean, if they're happy at 0.08 and they're thriving, let's let's not you know start messing. Let's not chase numbers. Let's just focus on what what the tank tells us. Now, ever since we've increased nitrates in this tank um, and, and, and started dosing them and going a little bit more heavy, we've definitely seen a lot less brown algae um, on, in this tank, which was a huge problem for us at the beginning. So it's definitely made a difference. So now I wanted to show this to you guys. Now this is a branching monopora right here, and it's supposed to be like a bright green, but if you look closely, you can see that all that dead tissue right there, that's because there's a yellow clown uh, goby that's in here munching away on him. Uh, see the bright green right there on the bottom? Uh, yeah, so he's really given us a problem eating these SPS corals. We lost a Walt Disney Acro to him, so we're going to have to figure out uh, how we're going to get him out of the tank. Also over here, we have some Aptasia, another issue that we're dealing with. That's not major right now, but it's, you know, we want to nip it in the butt. Uh, there's one there. There's a couple around here that I see. Another thing I wanted to point out that I thought was interesting is we have these uh, rose bubble tip anemones in the tank and you can see these colony of pink zippers right here that I was showing you guys earlier. And now this is the area right there that's underneath the actual bubble tip anemone. You can see they're still growing. These pink zippers are still growing and doing pretty good and there's no dead tissue. They're not dying back. They, you know, they're getting touched by the bubble tip anemone but they're not dying. Uh, the ones that are struggling are the ones that are kind of being shaded but for the most part, they're not getting stung. And I just thought that was interesting. You would think that they would have instantly melt. So as we take a look underneath the tank, I'll show you the Red Sea setup here. So everything with the Red Sea tank, their sumps are really compact. So first off, we have the uh, ATO right there, which is gravity fed. And then we have this little refugium section here where we're growing some macroalgae, some cholerpa, and we're using the aqua illumination light as our grow light. But you can see this, uh, it's working really well. There's a ton of macroalgae in this tank. I'll probably have to harvest some of that out today. Now I am a big fan of refugiums. I think they help keep the tank balanced and they add a lot of biodiversity to your tank. So overall, I think this tank is headed in the right direction. There are a little bit of you know minor hiccups or whatever, but we can address those, uh, deal with them as they come. I'd like to add some more coral, different variations of coral in this tank. Um, I think that will make it stand out a little bit more. Uh, but again, overall, this is a very healthy, uh, thriving tank, and uh, I'm, I'm really excited with the, how far it's come. All right, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it, and have a good one.